thousand college students and uh, the academic end and so many other discipline, just what you want, right? Uh, you know, how would you like a job being the discipline guy for a couple of thousand knucklehead college students? So I think college would be great. No dorms, no meals, just classes. Teaching's easy, right? That's the easy part of a college. Oh, it's keeping these young people from being knuckleheads. But anyway, he and his wife, um, he shared a little bit of his testimony yesterday and is working with Dr. Lee Robertson and his uh, closeness to Dr. John Rice and then, of course, Dr. Hiles for many, many years. And, um, but they have been for over 50 years right in the work of soul winning and bus routes and, and running whole bus ministries. And, uh, boy, I just love, I love being around people who love the work of God. And that's, that's why he's here. Um, just for decades and decades of faithfulness, and we're glad he's here. So, Brother Jorgensen, you come. Please. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. Let me turn this on. Lights red and turn green. So am I on this then? That's good. And uh, I'll move this out of the way because I'm not that tall and I can't see through it. And uh, anyhow, it is a blessing to be here. appreciate Brother Goddard. I appreciate the church. I uh, appreciate the uh, faithfulness of the ministry here to stand for the same things decade after decade. Uh, a lot of people go in different directions, having different ideas. Uh, it's good to be in a place where I mean, it's just the same uh, as it's always been. And you say, man, it seems kind of old fashioned. I mean, that's like from the 60s. No, it's like from 2000 years ago when we got the instructions from our Lord. Uh, we're not supposed to change it. We're supposed to keep doing the same kind of thing. Uh, let's see, I'm going to get a swallow of water, and I'm sorry. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about our college, and then I'm going to preach a message that I haven't preached uh, really ever out uh, as a message, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll get done in 10 minutes, I'm not sure. Uh, but probably not. Don't, uh, you know, don't get too eager. Uh, this morning, I know uh, the message on heaven, I felt led to preach. I think it was uh, what God wanted. I had preached it at our Young Fundamentalist Conference, and uh, Brother Josh Goddard said there were probably a dozen of you that heard it already. Uh, so I'm aware of that, but I anyhow felt like preaching it again. Uh, anyhow, Com uh, Commonwealth Baptist College uh, started in 1999. We've been there since 2003. Uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington's a city, uh, right? Well, it's probably just under 300,000 right there in the area when we moved there, about 400,000 now. Uh, you've got the University of Kentucky there. You've got uh, another uh, secular university uh, right in town, uh, one that goes back to the 1700s. And, uh, you know, it's a cosmopolitan city. I like it. I like to say it's big enough to have everything you need and small enough that you can get around. Uh, you know, we, uh, our college campus is out on the edge of town. We've got 25 acres across from one of the most famous horse farms in the world, maybe the most famous, uh, Calumet Farm, if you're into that, uh, which, uh, you know, we don't gamble on horse races. <laughs> we don't go to horse races. Uh, if you live in Lexington, you can't help but know a little bit about horses and horse racing. Uh, it's, I mean, it's the news, it's the thing. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we've got a beautiful 25-acre campus on the edge of town, dormitories, classrooms, uh, state-of-the-art computers, everything else, uh, and God is blessed. We registered, I believe it was 162 last year, and uh, should be the, around the same number again this year. Uh, we're independent, fundamental, King James, soul winning, separated Baptist college. And if you're looking for a Baptist college, it'll be a lot like what you have here with the same emphasis and the same everything. I don't think you're going to find one any closer than what we are. Uh, one of the things, we both, Brother Fugit, our pastor and president, we're all still following Brother Hiles and Brother Rice and people like that. And uh, you know, if it works, why change it? But anyhow, uh, Commonwealth Baptist College, we require everybody to be in a ministry, a soul winning ministry. Uh, there work most everybody, most everybody's on a bus route and or a Sunday school class on Sunday. Uh, we require everybody to go out visiting, soul winning three hours a week. 
Uh, you have to witness to at least one person every week. Uh, we encourage the people to do the kind of thing, and uh, you know, we have things like that uh, where we have services in the park and that kind of thing where you lead people to Christ. And uh, somebody said, well, a lot of those, I may have said this someplace in the last day or two, uh, but anyhow, somebody said, well, those people aren't all going to come to church, but they're all going to heaven if they get saved. And uh, anyhow, we encourage that kind of thing just like you do here, and your students will be encouraged and pushed and urged uh, to go soul and see people saved like that. Uh, dress standards will be just the same as you have here. Uh, girls won't be allowed to wear slacks or, uh, you know, basketball shorts and call them culottes and whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, the dress standards are going to be the same as you have here and the haircuts for the guys and everything else. Music is straight, traditional, and uh, like what you have here, uh, it just matches. Uh, at least everything I've seen here. Uh, straight traditional music, nothing unusual. We'll encourage you to say amen. And I already mentioned King James Bible and everything else. Uh, tuition, room board, uh, fees, everything is a little bit over 8000 a year. Uh, first payment uh, is an extra $420 in fees and then 785 times five. Uh, so it comes out on a little over 4000 a semester. Uh, 785 on your monthly payment. If you're having trouble paying your bills here, you might come to Bible College. Uh, 785 a month, you get a place to stay, utilities paid, all you can eat three times a day. And uh, I was talking to one of the fellows yesterday, not yesterday, uh, last week, going into his senior year, uh, talking about his plans and you know what are you going to do and. Uh, I don't ask everybody this, but I happened to ask him something about finances uh, or your needs met. And he said, oh, yeah, I mean, my bills are paid. I got several little saving. And I said, what you said you had, I couldn't quite, I didn't quite understand him. Uh, he, I said, you said, got 1000 in saving? Oh, no, no, I got 10000 in saving uh, right now. And I said, and you've been on your, totally on your own through college, paying all his own bills. Has a, Decent job, probably not one of the best jobs in the college, but uh, doesn't spend money, doesn't waste money, pays his bills, uh, has a car uh, that he bought and everything else. I mean, you know, it's just job market's good. You get a job, you spend your money wisely, and uh, there's no reason anybody can't go to Bible college. Money certainly shouldn't keep you from it these days, job market being what it is. Uh, same as here, you know, anywhere you walk in, there's signs, help wanted and uh, glad to have you. So uh, I didn't bring any college material with me. Uh, I was coming mainly to preach and so on. Uh, you can look at the website, commonwealthbaptist.org, O-R-G, and uh, you know, find everything out about it there. Talk to my wife and me after the service if you'd like to. Uh, the servant's fourth child is going there this year. You probably asked them about it, and uh, others of you here, and. Uh, uh, have been there. It's, uh, I think it's a great place and it certainly matches uh, with what you have here. So anyhow, uh, so much about the college. Uh, why don't you get your Bible and I'm gonna, I'll am going i go ahead and have you stand. Do you, do you normally stand to read scripture? Uh, okay, go ahead and stand if you're able and uh, turn your Bible to Acts chapter uh, 1 and I'm going to read a few verses there and preach a uh, different kind of a message here. Uh, Acts chapter 1, Jesus' final words to the disciples, to the church at the time. Uh, and then when they were come together, they asked of him, Acts 1, 6, uh, they asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They were still looking for the kingdom and uh, wanted him to come in as the uh, kingly Messiah, set up the kingdom. And he, Jesus, said unto them, the disciples, others, whoever was there, uh, it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father uh, hath put in his own power. Uh, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And uh, that's the commandment that Jesus gave to the disciples, his final marching orders uh, to all of us. And that's what we ought to spend our life doing. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the instruction in it. Thank you that uh, you walk with us and you're with us day by day. We can trust you completely with our lives. 
Help us to live for you today. Guide my mind and pray that you'd impress on me what to say at times. And pray, Holy Spirit, you'd speak to hearts as I speak to ears. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Uh, preacher mentioned something about retirement. And actually, this outline came uh, as I was uh, approaching 65 a uh, long time ago now. Uh, but as I was getting towards 65, I, I started thinking, well, you know, this is when people retire. Uh, and what am I going to do? And I was still in good health then, still in good health now. And, uh, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, what should I do? And talk to some different friends of mine. Uh, talk, remember uh, talking to an old high school buddy uh, when I was back in my hometown of Racine, Wisconsin. And... Uh, Talk, he was he is retired from Johnson's Wax, S.C. Johnson, and uh, said, oh, man, Jim, you ought to retire. Uh, it's great. You can do whatever you want. And I said, well, what are you doing? He said, well, my parents had this uh, little cabin up in Door County. I've been up there fixing it up and so on and so on. And I, I kind of thought, well, man, I don't know. Is that the purpose of life, to fix up a cabin? And I, I didn't say that. I just said, oh. And I kind of thought, too, you know, I'm doing whatever I want, serving God, Amen. and I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> Why should I retire? Yes, sir. Amen. I mean, but anyhow, and uh, my wife and I live in a nice neighborhood, and so people, and we're old, and so people think we have more money than we do. And uh, we get all these letters to different, uh, you know, come and let us help you plan your retirement and so on and so on. A lot of them, they'll give you a steak dinner or a dinner at a really nice restaurant. Uh, got a place called The Castle out there. We've been there for free meals a couple of times on that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, so you go to these things. And, uh, you know, they, and you think, well, you know, maybe they've got some ideas or how to maximize your Social Security and on and on and on. And, and I thought sometimes, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you could just know what would work financially? Because none of them really know. And they all have different ideas. Uh, they just all want you to pay them to invest your money. And, uh, but nobody knows. And I got thinking, you know who knows? He knows. God's got a plan. All I've got to do is figure God's plan out and follow it, and it's going to be great. Amen. As far as that goes, that's the same thing for your life. You know, young people, you're trying to make plans for your life, and what should I do, and where should I go? Should I go into ministry? How am I going to pay these bills? You know, God's already got a plan for your life. Amen. It's the greatest plan in the world. All you have to do is find God's plan, follow it. It's going to be great. Amen. I mean, it's, it's just Follow God's plan. So how do you find God's plan? You read this book. That doesn't tell you what city to live in, but it sure, you know, Roman, or, uh, Acts 1-8 sure tells you what you ought to be doing. And uh, anyhow, uh, I think some people, it seems like, as they get older, you know, retire and lose their purpose in life. And I enjoy traveling. I enjoy seeing things. I mentioned, you know, places we've been on tours here and there. And, and I enjoy, but that's not the goal of life. That's a break, a vacation, a day or two. My wife and I are going to take it uh, Monday, Tuesday this week and uh, just kind of go around and enjoy being around San Diego a little bit, different places there. But that's not the goal of life. Anyhow, as I considered my future and that point and possible retirement, I determined several things. Number one, and this is where I'm going to fit in and try and get into things I want to challenge you to do for the rest of your life. I decided, number one, I'm going to stay in an independent, fundamental, soul-winning, separated Baptist church. Amen. I mean, I, I just, that's what I believe in. I, I want to be in a independent I mean, the conventions, God bless them and praise God for everybody who preaches the gospel wherever they preach the gospel. But God set up the local church to be an independent local church. And uh, I want to stay in an independent, fundamental. Say, well, Brother Jordan, you're not supposed to use that word anymore. Why, why not? It's what I am. I'm a fundamentalist. Say, well, you know, some of that's got a bad name. I don't know. Somebody in fundamentalism messed up. Somebody in everything messed up. I mean, you know, anyhow, 
I am a fundamentalist. And uh, I want to stay and be a part of an independent, fundamental, soul winning. I believe in soul winning, like you're doing here. I mean, Jesus said, you shall receive power and you shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, Samaria, the uttermost part of the world. That, that's our purpose as being here. Amen. If my purpose was simply to serve God and without witnessing, I may as well go to heaven. I'll be able to serve God, praise God, know more about God once I get to heaven than I can here. While I'm here, I've got this old flesh. I can't serve him perfectly here because of the flesh. But when I get to heaven, I'll be able to serve him perfectly. The only reason, God leave, the only reason for God leaving us here after we get saved is so we can win others to Christ. Amen. Otherwise, just well take every one of us the moment we get saved. Well, that's it. You'll never sin again. Won't sin when you get to heaven. And that'll be tremendous. But anyhow... I want to stay a part of an independent, fundamental, soul-winning, separated Baptist church. Amen. I mean, I believe in separation, and I, you know, men ought to dress like men, women ought to dress like women. Amen. I mean, it's easy to figure out what you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your, as far as that goes, your gender is not even determined at birth. Your gender is deter assigned at birth. That's what they you know, refer to now, the gender you're assigned at. Your gender is not assigned. If it were assigned at birth, it could be reassigned later. Your gender is determined at conception. And it's revealed at birth or earlier. It was so uh, sonograms and all that. Most of the time, you know, nowadays they know three after three, four months of pregnancy if it's a boy or a girl. Then when they're 13, they don't know anymore what it is. And that's supposed to be science? But anyhow, uh, I don't know where that fit into the notes, but anyhow. I mean, I believe in separation. Men ought to look like men. Women ought to look like women. Uh, that's, you know, I, I, you know, well, it's, you know, wearing dresses now, you're just, it's outdated. I don't know, but I think it's Bible. And uh, I'm sure, you know, the neighborhood ladies uh, look at my wife sometimes out pruning the bushes or whatever like that, and she'll go out and uh, work around the yard a little bit or come out and prune, and, you know, wearing a skirt. And why, I mean, why is she doing, you know, they're kind of weird. And we get along well with our neighbors. I mean, and we, you know, we live in a nice neighborhood. Uh, and we get along with them and, uh, you know, try and be friendly. Some of them saved, some of them aren't. But uh, I, they, they undoubtedly all think we're a little bit weird. <laughs> and look out the window Sunday morning and seven, you know, about nine o'clock, 9.15, we uh, go to meet the buses when they get to church. There they go. Come home Sunday afternoon, evening service now starts at 6, so about 5.25 we leave the house. There they go. Wednesday night, 6.30 or so, we're leaving. There they go. Saturday morning, 8.30, there they go, over to the bus meeting. They don't know where we're going, but every week, shirt and tie, where are they? Sometime the trumpet will sound, and they'll look up and say, there they go. Amen. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to please my mate, my neighbors. I'm trying to please God. I, mean, I, I like being well thought of, and again, we get along well with our neighbors, and uh, you know, we're friendly. Try witnessing to them, and so on. And uh, some of them I feel confident are saved. Some go to a Baptist church in town, and so on. And uh, others have given testimony. Others aren't. Some aren't friendly about that. We talk about other things. But I'm not trying to please them. I'm trying to please God. I want to be a part for the rest of my life of an independent, fundamental, soul-winning, separated Baptist church. Number two, I want to keep winning souls. You know, each of us, you know, the Great Commission and verses like Acts 1-8 aren't given to the church. They're given to individuals. And the church as a whole, it, it carries it out. And, and, but, you know, being part of a great soul-winning church is wonderful. But that doesn't mean that you and I aren't individually supposed to win souls. 
I mean, I, there's uh, undoubtedly a crowd this size. There's people who say, well, yeah, I'm glad I'm part of a church that wins souls. And when they gave those testimonies tonight and about these children getting saved and the man got saved that had ridden a bus 43 years ago and heard the gospel but kept putting it off, putting it off, and finally got saved six months ago and then is, you know, and so on and so on. I mean, you say, oh, that's exciting. I'm glad I'm a part of a church like this. I'll put money in the offering and pay other people to do it. But that doesn't excuse you and I not witnessing either. I won't keep winning souls. I won't keep working the bus routes. My wife and I personally visit on a bus route in the Lexington area just about every, I mean, not quite every one, but just about every Saturday we're in Lexington. We weren't on a bus route yesterday in Lexington. We were a week ago. We will be next week. And we go out and visit. I oversee the nine different college routes during the school year, running eight of them this summer. We'll go out and make follow-up visits on that, knock new doors, try and win souls, see people saved sometimes, not every time. Try and line up visitors. Some of our visitors come. Most of them don't. That's, I mean, I'm supposed to do that as a Christian. And uh, I want to keep winning souls. You ought to carry gospel tracts with you. You ought to have them ready to give out. Uh, I want to keep winning souls. I want to stay in an independent fundamental service. I want to continue uh, working to, in ministry to train in where my, anyhow, I'll read you what I wrote. I want to continue my service in the ministry where my experience and gifts will help the most. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, training preachers and Christian school teachers and wives is what God's given me to do. I'll keep serving God with my life. Amen. I don't want to retire. I, I don't want to, you know, say, well, what would you, well, I'll sit on the uh, sofa and, uh, you know, watch channel or sit there and watch the birds or I'll take a trip to see some new unusual bird. And I'll see this beautiful sight. And again, a vacation's okay or a few days off here and there are fine. But that's not the purpose of life. And uh, I think as we train preachers, start churches, we're working at saving our country. Our country's in horror horrible shape. I mean, you don't have to be as old as I am to realize that this is half of what's going on is nutty. And it's scary. And the everything from the monetary policy and the you know what they're going to with the I mean, it's just scary if you don't trust God. Now I don't know what's going to happen. But as I read the Bible, whether or not God spares a country is not determined by how sinful the sinners are. It's determined by whether or not there's enough of a righteous remnant. You know, God didn't say to Lot or Abraham, you know, if you can get those people in Sodom and Gomorrah to be less sinful and less blatant and open in their sin and just tone it back a little bit and do it undercover or something and not be open, you know, then I'll spare the city. God said, if you can find 10 righteous there, I'll spare the city. Amen. And I think it's our job to keep building a righteous remnant. Amen. And uh, that's why I, you know, I want to stay in that. And that's your job. And I mean, you be a part of a church like this and give and train. That's why we're here this morning with Brother Salazar doing a great work up there and wherever it is, Ontario, I guess. Uh, you know, trying to win souls. Train in a righteous remnant and uh, want to be a part of something like that. I decided I'm going to give my allegiance to principles, not to institutions. And, uh, not, you know, Tennessee Temple, I worked there a long time. It doesn't even exist anymore. Then the church, Highland Park Baptist Church, I mean, there's a remnant of it that moved and changed, but it's, it's not the same thing. Uh, other places change. Look, decide, figure out what the Bible says and decide this is it. Straight down the line, Dr. Robertson would say, straight down the line, never vary. This is it. I'm going to live out my life. And you know, the Bible teaches separation. The Bible teaches holiness. The Bible teaches soul winning. That's what, ought, my, that's what my life ought to be about. Uh, I want to give my allegiance to principles like being an independent, fundamental, soul-winning Baptist. Somebody said, what would you be if you weren't a Baptist? I'd be ashamed. And uh, I mean, 
I want to continue promoting soul winning separation standards, old time fundamentalism. Look, we're not in a popularity pro contest, we're in a truth preaching contest. My job is not to win friends and influence people, my job is to preach the truth. And your job is to live a clean, separated life and preach the truth at work. You work a secular job, I mean, that's great, but I mean, everybody there ought to know you're a Christian. I mean, at least you ought to be able to do is take a gospel track and say, you know, here's where I go to church, come join us. Amen. Bible verses on the back there about heaven you might want to read. Look for an opportunity to witness. I mean, well, if they thought, if they know I go to the church, they'd think I was some religious nut. I'm trying to please him, not the guy that works next to you. And you know, you set up a testimony like that, you get, you stay out of a lot of stuff. I've been in some environments where they said, you know, work situation, where they said, uh, Jim, uh, you may, you may want to wait over here and kind of study a little bit. We got something going on back there that you probably don't want to be a part of. And there's a part of me, I mean, you know, I'm human, I'm thinking, oh, these are good people, can't be that bad. I'm curious what it is. Maybe you wouldn't think like that, but I did. I kind of like, you know, but I thought, you know, it's good that I've got a testimony like that. Amen. I still don't know what happened. They're good people. They, you know, I mean, couldn't be that bad. But keep you out of a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, you dress like a Christian. You look like a Christian. Go on bus routes. And I, I've had some people say, oh, you must be a preacher. That's good. Some of them say, I thought you were a lawyer coming to the door, tie, you know, and so on. I had a couple say, I, I thought you were a detective. <laughs> Nobody ever thought I uh, said, I thought you were a dope dealer. I don't look like that. I don't want to look like that. It keeps me out of a lot of stuff. Nobody offers me stuff that I shouldn't take. Whether I'm a preacher, a lawyer, or a detective, they don't offer me that garbage. <laughs> Keeps you, you know, make, <laughs> solves a lot of things for you. And uh, I, I want to look like a Christian. You know, you, I, somebody had a Michigan tie on up here tonight. I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, I grew up a Green Bay Packer fan. Green Bay's playing in uh, Cincinnati. Uh, first exhibition, their first exhibition game this year will be on Friday night, August 11. I got two tickets, taking my grandson. We're going up to that. We're going to dress in green and gold, Green Bay's colors. I wouldn't want anybody there to think I was a Cincinnati Bengals fan. <laughs> I'm not going to wear black and orange. And you know what? We'll be in the minority. We're away from home in a far country. Amen. And we'll look weird. Yes, sir. But that's okay. I want to look like a Packers fan. Somebody gave me years ago a Brett Favre jersey. I'll probably wear that. Packers jersey from back in the day. And uh, I want to look like a Christian. You know, if I want to look like, go to a football game, I'll look like a Green Bay Packer fan. Why wouldn't I want to look like a Christian when I go anywhere else? I'm not ashamed to be a Christian. I want to dress and go by the standards. And anyhow, I want to teach, I'm going to give my allegiance to principles, not institutions. I'm going to continue promoting soul winning. I pray for wisdom on the use of the money God gives us. Want to stick with old-time church music, not contemporary or country? I mean, music like we have here. Again, somebody said, well, it's old-fashioned. Yeah, about 2,000 years old. It's what God gave us to do. My goal is not simply to enjoy the rest of my life. That My goal is to be productive the rest of my life. I'm older than most of you. And uh, one of the things I you know, noticed in the church, uh, I, I'm undoubtedly one of the older people in the room, maybe the oldest. Be 76 in, the, in October. 
You're younger, you've got more of life left than I do. Let's use our lives to glorify God. Let's live a separated life. Let's, let's carry gospel tracts and give them out and, and sometimes at least say, let me show you, let me take a few minutes and go over with you what the Bible says, how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. Wouldn't that be a good thing to know? And people again and again say it sure would. And uh, pray and bow their heads and trust Christ as Savior. The goal in life is not to be comfortable I just want to have fun. But you know what? There's no fun like serving God. You know, if, if the goal is to be happy, what all of us, and, and to have a good time, what all of us should decide to do is sell out completely to God, serve Him. It's the best life in the world. Amen. There's nothing, to, the world and the devil, I mean, the uh, old saying, all Satan's apples have, whole, have worms. Rich fool. Uh, or no, the prodigal son, there's no fun in the far country. And it's got enamored glitter for a little bit, but it'll take you away from God and it'll mess up your life. I, I, I don't know anybody that's backslid like that and come back and said, oh man, I'm so glad I did. Got jail services and everything else going on around here. It's so wonderful to be married 52 years. Be able to serve God together. Be able to just, I mean, stay the same. I want to stay, I want to be a fundamentalist. I want to continue to do what I was taught to do by men of God whom I admire and by, as they showed it to me, out of the word of God. And then I read the Bible myself and said, yep, that's what it says. So if God said it, that settles it whether you believe it or not. If God said it, then I want to follow it. I want to obey it. I want to serve him. I want to spend whatever days God gives me. And none of us know how long we have. I mean, who knows? A friend that told me, you know, retire, you do whatever you want. He's in heaven today, I think. That I had testimony, he was saved. I know he passed away. And uh, I want to keep serving God with my life. I'm going to look, live for the day that I'll see him. And uh, how much money you had here or how famous you were, or, I mean, it isn't going to matter anything. What will matter is, am I saved, and what have I done for Christ? Amen. I know I'm saved. Amen. I haven't done enough for Christ. I want to keep serving him, keep working, keep living a separated life. One of, again, the exciting things to me about coming to a church like this is it's just, it's just the same. And the uh, same kind of thing as what we've done and preached and had preached to us all these years. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Again, I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that.